Okay, is it going? All right. Um, so we're on page 91, Precision and Accuracy. This is the last section of this chapter, so remember tomorrow you'll have an accelerated reader, and then Monday we'll review. So I'm taking your accelerated reader, and you're not taking it, but you would rather have a review on Monday, and then we'll take the test on Tuesday. Yep? Yes. And so you have an accelerated yes, reader on there. Okay, that's what you chose to do. Okay. All right. Thank you for. All right. So uh, this is a, a section uh, 110, precision and accuracy. Anytime in mathematics that you deal with numbers, there is a choice of how things go and what's accurate, what's precise. You know, we go back to seventh grade math and you talk about UPSI. You know, it goes understand, plan, solve, and check. Check is part of that accuracy and precision. So it goes way back there. But if we look on page 91, the first word in this section is precision. Okay, so let's write that word down, precision. And it says precision refers to the clustering of a group of measurement. It depends only on the smallest unit of measure available on a measuring tool. Suppose, okay, so it refers to a clustering of group measurements, okay? Now, if you take a look at that first ruler, all right, uh, if we want to find uh, 8 centimeters, if we're measuring something, and you're told that a segment measures about 8 centimeters, I'm going to show you about precision. And this is, if you want to know what connection this has to the assignment, the, um, the first on page 93, it says, find the absolute error of each measurement, then explain its meaning. So what we're looking for is we're headed towards absolute error. Can you get the door, please, Uton? And if you, uh, would there be anything about the nets on the test? Yes. Okay. The definition of a net. Okay. Yep. Yep. The De definition of a net. You okay. won't have to fold anything. Ours will be when you fold the nets and work on them. That's will be what okay. you do. Okay. So it says underneath here, if we're looking at a segment and it measures eight centimeters, it looks. It says, notice that each the exact length of each segment above is between 7.5 or 8 point centimeters or within 0.5 centimeters of 8 centimeters. So look at those. If I told you a segment was 8 centimeters, look at all three of those. I don't know what color they are, green, blue, and red. All three of those are around 8 centimeters, correct? And you would round them or whatever. You would say they're about 8 centimeters. So it says the absolute error of a measurement is equal to one half the unit of measure. So let's take a look at absolute error. And this tells us how precise we can be. The absolute error is one half the unit measure. Okay? So if we're looking at eight centimeters, its unit measure is what? That's the key. What's the unit measure? Eight All right, the, it's eight. No, it's what's the unit measure? What's it based on? Centimeters. One centimeter. So the unit measure is one centimeter. Correct? Mm -hmm. So according to this, we're going to take a half of that. So a half times one is a half. So our, our absolute error is one half centimeters. Now what do we do with that? Here's the kicker. What we're going to do with that, Greeley, is we're going to take the 8 centimeters and we're going to subtract the 1 half. That gives us 7.5 centimeters. And then we're going to add it to the 8 centimeters. So it's 8.5 centimeters. So the absolute error, okay, it says, uh, let me put it the way they say, the absolute error is equal to 1 half. So we can be between... 8, 7.5 centimeters and 8.5 centimeters will give us 8 centimeters. We can be anywhere in between those. And our segment would be approximately 8 centimeters. Okay? Now, the absolute error is this. But this is what we can be between. All right? So if we take a look at our assignment, 
It says find the absolute error of each uh, measurement, then explain it. All right? So this is, this is the explanation. This is the absolute error. So if we go 12 yards, uh, let's, let's make it a little harder. Let's go number nine. This one I've it. Yeah. Let's go number nine. 50 and 4 sixteenths inch, correct? Yes. All right. So the unit of measure is what? That's the key. Yep. One inch. Is what? One inch? No. No. The smallest unit that we're spaced on. One sixteenth. It's one sixteenth. Because we have four sixteenths. So one sixteenth is our unit measure. What do we do with that, Gigi? You add two. No. The first thing you do is you multiply it by a half. Absolute error to find our absolute error. Okay? So it is one thirty second. Inch. Whoops, I didn't label. This is my first answer. Does everybody understand that? So you take the smallest unit, and that's your unit, and your units on that. For the unit measure, do you have to have a label on it? Yes, you do. Oh, for the unit measure, no, one sixteenth. You probably should. Okay. Yes. Could you simplify the four sixteenths to one? Um. You can, I would, I would leave it the way they have it, okay. because it makes it easier than, okay, when you add and subtract, I think. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to take 50 and 4 sixteenths minus 1 32nd, and then I'm going to take 50 and 4 sixteenths plus 1 32nd. So you're going to add it to whatever you have there. Does that make sense? Utan? Yep. All right. Good luck today. Thanks. So, um, so this, if I get a common denominator, is 50 and 32 would be 8 over 32 minus 1 over 32. Does everybody see where I got that? I got a common denominator. <laughs> and if, are you okay? Whoops, I don't know where 13 came from. If we're that's, get 8. Okay. Take it times 2. I took 16 times 2 to get 32. I take 4 times 2 to get a common denominator. Oh. Right? Yeah. Now I subtract, and I get 50 and 7 over 32. And now I'm going to add them. And don't reinvent the wheel here, because you have 460. Just rewrite it as 50 and 8 over 32 plus 1 over 32. And it's 50 and 9 over 32. Okay? Yes? So what is that telling you? Okay, that's a great question. That, they're going to say, you remember where it says, then explain its meaning? You see that in yeah. the directions? It says, all right, I'm going to write it like they do. So you, maybe this is the best way. The exact, <coughs> Bo, the exact measurement could be, could be between 50 and 7 over 32 and 9, or 50 and 9 over 32. Whatever the measurement is, it's between those two values. We don't know exactly where it is, but we know it's between those. That's as close as we can come to it. Does that help, Bo? Yeah. So okay. it's kind of like a so, room for error type deal. Exactly. Thing. Yep. So there's your first answer and there's your second answer. Harper, do you have any questions on that? No. Okay. You understand how to do the first six. Okay, let's, let's run through 8 through um, 13. Let's just talk about the unit measure. All right? So number 8, 12 yards, what's the unit measure, Kyle? If it's 12 yards, what's the unit measure? One yard. One yard. So would you take that 1 times 0.5? Okay. Dawson, uh, we talked about 9, so jump to 10. It's 3.28 feet. Um. One hundredth, which is point zero one. So you're going to take point zero one times one half. All right, and then we're going to add it and subtract it. Correct. What about uh, two point seven five nine centimeters on number eleven? Utan. 
0.001. It's 0 0.001. Okay. What about uh, number 12, Harper's uh, 14 and 7 eighths mile? 1 eighth. One eighth. Mile. Do you see how to do that, Joss? Mm -hmm. We good? All right. Okay. And then yeah. they already have it for you on number 13 then? 0. Or 0 0.001. Yeah, it's already the unit measure. Yep. Yeah. Any, any more questions on that, um, the absolute error? Okay, take a look on the next page. We're going to talk about significant digits. What are significant digits? You've had them in science, haven't you? Have you had significant digits? No. Okay, significant digits are digits that are there for a reason. Okay, that's what significant means. Now, you're going to have this in science, and I'll tell you, some of the rules in math and some of the rules in science do not, they're not the same. Is uh, digits that have many meaning. In other words, they don't just hold a place value. They don't just hold a place value. They actually have a meaning. All right. Significant digits. If I ask you how many significant digits something has, the, here's the rules for them. The rules in math are different than science. First of all, um, all non-zero digits. All non-zero. So if it's a seven, it's significant. If it's a 2, it's significant. You see what I'm saying? All non-zero digits are significant. You keep spelling significant. Do I? What, what am I? Oh. Significant. Fuck. Yeah. This should be a Sign C. Should significant. Spell it for me, please. S-I-G-N-I-F-I-C-A-N-T. There you go. Okay. Thank you for that. I got it. Yeah. Super fat. Yeah, I, I was just copying it. Yeah, don't copy me all the time. And it's very important that you know how to spell it. I, honestly, I didn't even notice it. Okay. Um, it says in the second one, in whole numbers, zeros are significant if they fall between non-zero digits. So number two, in whole numbers. What does that mean? There's no fraction. Oh, no decimal. Yeah, yeah would be the same. No fraction, no decimal. In whole numbers... Um, uh, all zeros are significant if they are between two non-zero digits. Okay? Okay, the next one says, in decimal numbers greater than or equal to 1, in decimal numbers, and I'm going to use a mathematical symbol, greater than or equal to 1, every digit is significant. Can I just put SIG? <laughs> I'm cheating now, right? Oh, if we can put it on the test. No, nope. I'll spell it out. There you go, sir. Way to ruin a good thing. And the last thing in decimal numbers less than one. Decimal numbers less than one. The first non-zero digit and every digit to the right are significant. The first non-zero digit and every digit digit to the right. Are significant. All 
All right, let me give you some examples once you get all this written down. All right, let's take number one. All right, how many significant digits? How many significant digits? This is greater than one. In decimal numbers greater than one, every, di every digit is significant. So there are six. All right? Two. Point zero zero seven five zero. All right, let's take a look at that. It says in a decimal number is less than one, which this is the first non-zero digit, and every number to the right. Good luck with Don. Two. So the first non-digit, this one, and every number after that. Oh, one, two, three. So actually, it'd be infinite, wouldn't it? No, it doesn't go on forever. No, it doesn't? No. You know, if there would be a line over it, would it be yeah. infinite? Yeah, then we, yeah. Okay, but it doesn't go on forever. Let's try this one. See ya, Utan. Bye. CJ. Five. No. Wait, is that a comma? Two. That's a, that's a comma. Oh, then two. Two. This one is 17,000. This is 2. Okay? Non-zero digits are significant, right? It's not a decimal number because there's no decimal. I mean, there is, but we don't write it. Okay, yes, sir. So do you read from the decimal point? This is the decimal point right here. You go this yes. If I change this like this, Bo, watch this. This is 17, and if I do this, even if I do this, even if I just put the decimal point here, how many significant digits? Two, two. No. Five. Five. That's just by me putting it in there tells the reader that I want all the digits to be significant. If I don't put it in there, then these don't matter. I wouldn't put this decimal in here unless it mattered. Okay. All right? Yeah. Now watch this. If I change it to 17,000, point zero, now how many? Six. Six. Because if the reader says, this must be significant, but I wouldn't put a zero there unless it mattered. Mm -hmm. Right? You wouldn't put that zero there unless it mattered, would you? Would you put that decimal point there unless it mattered? Mm -hmm. No. So it must matter. Okay, so that's the, that's the problem with significant digits. Is is it depends on which what's there, what's happening. Okay, you okay there, Harper? Yeah. Hang in there, bud. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at on page ninety two, ninety two two a. Two a on the guided practice, right underneath example two. Two a. 7,779,000 miles. How many significant digits, Addy? Three. There's no decimal point, so it's three. All right, 2B. How many significant digits now? Gigi? Nope. Nope. Five. Because all the zeros are between two significant digits. This one right here. Non, uh, if whole numbers, all zeros are significant if they are between two non-zero. And they're all there. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought like if they're the, like, if they're, they could want, like, maybe the zero in the middle. Or all no, them, they're the all significant. Percent. All right. What about, Harper, what about 2C? It's either seven or nine. I don't know which one. All right. Nine, I think. Nine. 
Yep, all of them are significant. You wouldn't put those there unless they were seen. And the, and the one zeros are in between nine zero. Okay, so, all right. All right. Let's take a look at, what's the next word there? Uh, accuracy. 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 This is a word that we don't apply much anymore. It refers to how close a measured value uh, comes to the actual. Thank you. The actual or desired value. You know, a bullseye is a perfect example of this. A bullseye is a perfect example. Um, because we can tell from a bullseye how close you are. All right? And accuracy is important for many things in science, isn't it? Obviously, if you want to remove a tumor from your body, accuracy is very important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to remove it without removing other things. So we want to be accurate. Uh, when you're hunting, accuracy is important. Uh, making a good shot, right, uh, was whether the animal dies or you got to go chase it down, right? Which is not very fun, is it, for anybody that's done that? So, yeah, accuracy is kind of important in real life. We're going to talk about the relative. Now, we've already talked about absolute error, haven't we? Yeah. Absolute error was right here. Now we're going to talk about relative error. you got to know the difference between the two, okay? Relative error. Relative error equals the absolute error divided by the expected measurement. The absolute error divided, divided by the expected measurement. In the past, somebody said, well, it's the measurement they give you. Yeah, pretty much. Okay? Let me give you an example. Now, we change uh, relative error to percent. Um, so when they ask you to find, this one's a decimal, right? Or um, like right here, this one's a decimal or a fraction. The other one is a percent, so we move the decimal point, okay? We move it two places to the right to get a percent. All right, so let me give you an example. I'm on page 92. I'm down there where it says manufacturing. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so it says a manufacturer measures each part of a piece of equipment to be 23 centimeters in length. Find the relative error of this measurement. All right, so relative error equals the absolute error over the expected. So what we do is we have 23, what was it? Centimeters. Centimeters. Doesn't matter because it's not going to be our label. Whereas unit, as absolute has the label, we're going to be in percent. So what we do is, what's the unit measure? 23, or... One centimeter. one centimeter. So the unit measure, unit measure, is one centimeter. So what do we do with that to find the absolute error? Divide it. Divide it. Uh, Take it times a half, right? Which is divided. So this 0.5. takes times a half. We get zero point five. Correct. Now we're going to take that zero point five, and we're going to divide by the expected measurement, which is twenty three centimeters. So take point five. Now you don't want to do that in your head. So get your calculator out. And take 0.5 divided by 23. 0 0.5 oh, what's 0 0.021. 0 0.021? Yep. Okay, take a look at that. Oh, but it's rounded up. What's the OEM? What's the, no, this is 1 centimeter times 1 half yeah, equals, well, I'm doing yeah. absolute error, Kyle. Did, did you round this? Nope. Okay. It should be 0 0.021. All right. Two. It should be 22. 0 0.22. Okay, thank you very much. Why do we round it there? Because... That's what the book showed? Okay, we're going to change this to percent. So we're going to move the decimal two places to the right. So we want it 2.2%. So 2.2% is your relative error. I want to do another one just so you get that. Can I embrace this over yes. here? Do you remember how to find absolute error? Yeah. Okay. 
All right, remember it's a half. It's a half times the unit measure. All right, so here's the next one. Let's say that the distance between the next one, it says, a city planner makes a proposal for two new parks. The distance between the parks is 3.2 miles. Find the relative measure of the relative error of the measurement. Okay? It says the relative error of a measure is the ratio of the absolute error to the expected measurement, right? Yep. All right. So what was it, 3.2 miles? Yep. So 3.2 miles, what's my unit measure? 0 0.1 miles. 0 0.1 times 1 half, correct? Would give me my unit, my, my uh, 0 .05. absolute error. So I'm getting 0 0.05, correct? Mm -hmm. If you don't want to use a calculator, just you can take 0 0.1 times 0 0.5, and, okay? So I'm going to put this 0 0.05 or what? 3.2, and tell me what you get. Zero point what? Zero point one four. One four? You got have a zero point five six. Or oh, can you just give me four digits? Zero point one five six two. All right, let's take a look at that. How is it? Wait, is there be a zero for that one? Uh, thank you. Is that right? Okay, yeah. okay guys, you got to be, <laughs> you can't be accurate if you're not giving me the right decimals. All right, so now we're going to move this 1, 2, right? Yeah. So that would be 1.6% if I round it. We go to the nearest tenth. 1.6%. All right. Questions? All right. Your assignment is page 93, 8 through 25. I changed it. So you might want to tell um, page, what page was it? 93. 93. And I'm going number 8 through 25. Um, those guys got 27. I'm going to take two of them off. Okay? So I'm going to take two of them off. Right. Greeley. No, I don't have a question. I'm good. Okay. Are you messing with me? All right. No. All right. Does that, does everybody got it? All right. Did you just push the button? Oh. All right. Push it.